Getting a girl on a random visit to this West Nile district of Terigo was akin to chasing a wild deer for its safety from the fangs of the youthful lion. It was a very hard day for Asero Sharon, the eight-year-old girl, but a wonderful day and a blessing for the community and the Bravo Shoes community support team to pick a girl. Fast backward, as the team embarked on the long journey to West Nile, it started as a normal day but with a twist of events along the way including taking a divergent route away from the recommended route that goes through Maction Falls National Park. As the clock ticks, we embarked on a nine hour long journey to Arua, a strategic position for our plans to storm Terrigo District to execute our mission. We were advised to take Masindi Pakwach Arua route through Maction Falls National Park, a fine route instead of the usual Kigumba Boyali Pakwach Nebi Arua, which is under construction. From Kampala, it takes approximately 4 to 6 hours, 305 kilometers, to drive to Maction Falls National Park headquarters at Para, 85 kilometers from Masindi. The most direct route to Maction Falls National Park from Kampala is through the southern gates, Chikumbanyobo and Masindi South Gate. Before we could embark on this new route recommended, nature forced us to stop at the popular junction in Masindi after River Kafu to grab something to eat still in the morning hours. We were not alone. <laughs> After reaching Chikumanyobu and Masindi South Gate, we had to pay some fees to access Pakwach through the National Park. On this smooth drive in Maction Falls Park, you can see abundance of wildlife such as large herds of buffaloes, giraffes, elephants, lions, elusive leopard, at times spotted hyenas, warthogs, many antelopes such as Jackson's Hustpest, bushbucks, Uganda cob, waterbirds, and the hippos at the tributaries of the Nile welcome you on the entry to Pakwach, among other amazing creatures. Maction Falls National Park is simply a great place to explore, especially if you have few days. It gives you a chance to see so much in a very short time. The green savannah and these animals are amazing to look at. The families of baboon are spotted along the way in territories seated in family meetings. The gigantic elephants and giraffes with their little ones spotted along the way come out from their hidings, enjoying dinner and warthogs take the expanding mission, watching over strangers looming their territories every day. Game drivers last for about two and a half to three hours in length but you have the option to either keep it shorter as long as your entry permit is still valid. Pakwach district is another marvel to watch. Seated is very long, hot, greenless and flat terrain land with an identical architectural visibility of fine-looking huts commonly called manyatas. From the left to the right, the architecture was the same and the enemy appears to be the same. In this climatic threat condition, they still cut down trees to burn charcoal to survive and this looks to be the biggest export from the district. We continued through Yumbe 
Nebi and the journey was exhausting but we had to continue up to Arua where we finally had a stop over at Bamboo Restaurant and Bar for directions to Terego where we were informed that we have to endure for another 35 kilometers between Arua to Terego by road. Luckily, we get a guide, Papito. Before you reach Terigo, Arua has its own story to tell, a booming city with vast opportunities for the entire West Nile region. Transport solution to people is mainly open on cargo trucks. People risk to sit on top of trucks to access their work points. According to Papito, these people flock from nearby districts every day to come and work in Arua. No wonder, Arua City is a hub of opportunities with huge investments from the government and the private sector. Located at the confluence of a trade route between Uganda, South Sudan and the Democratic Republic of Congo, Arua City is a hub of trade and commerce with vast investment and tourism opportunities. Arua City is one of the newest cities established by Parliament of Uganda on 28th April 2020 as a regional city for the West Nile sub-region and became operational on 1st July 2020. It is bordered by the Democratic Republic of Congo on the west, Maracha district in the north, Terego district in the east, Arua district and Matidi Okolo district on the south and southeast respectively. On hitting the dusty road from Arua as we were reaching Terego town called Aivu, the same route reaches Yumbe before the dust settles. We spot two girls still coming from fetching water and one of them sees the car and waves. To their surprise, the car stops as they sense danger. Their instincts were true. The Bravo Shoes community support team seemed to have identified a girl child from Terego. We quickly ran to see where this girl was coming from. The young girls run for their dear lives and all the water they fetched get poured and the jerry can get spoiled. Very fast as they could, they leave us and we could only spot the traces of water until we reached their home. Aseru's grandmother, Regina Azikulu, was ready to defend her grandchild to the teeth. What would happen to her now, yet she has been after taking care of her for the last eight years without a single scar on her body. Aseru has a mother but she was abandoned when she was three months old and never to return home, the grandmother said. What changed the whole story? Bravo Shoes support team leader, Yesiji Bryan, broke the news to the grandmother that Aseru is going to school until she finishes the university. At this moment of time, the shy Aseru had smiles all over her face and her story of her life has just started to change from taking care of goats at home to the region respective of the empowered girl child in school. The grandmother, Regina Azikulu, got some relief out of the eight grandchildren she takes care of as a peasant farmer in Terrigal, at least one is going to attain a better education up to the unprecedented levels missing in the community. However, we don't know what is going on to her close friend Patricia Hope, a 10-year-old primary pupil. We pray that someone outside there should come and rejoin these two children for a common purpose. Uh, 
So Mimi, this girl stays here with the grandma. Yeah. The mom, their mom is a Yeah. Their mom is from here, but after bundle after giving birth to the kid, yeah, and then leaving her here, yeah, then also got her way out. Okay. Left the kid and she has never come. She has never bothered to check on You mean in eight years she has never come? You mean eight years she has never come to see uh, her daughter? No. She has never? So does grandma know where the daughter is? This one's mom? Yes. In the Okay. So this is these are her grandchildren. Okay. But her children, her actual children, yeah. for them they are in Kampala. When this one was brought was brought and abandoned here, yeah. was it the size of almost this one? Was it the size of this one? Or the size of this one. Okay. And then the mom left and went. Yeah. Up to now she herself she even doesn't know where this one's mom went. She after abandoning her. That is eight years ago. Yeah. And her soul? And then this one? Yes. Teddy. Demand rich. Okay, this one the mom is around. The mom is around. And yes. the mom and the of these ones? Teazidi. This one, the mom is also around the father's around there, but in the narrow town. In the narrow town, yes. What about Teazidi? Somebody might run. This one is a neighbor's kid. He's a neighbor's kid. Yes. A neighbor's kid. Who had accompanied her? Stayed, yes. Oh, they come and stay here. The rural setup, yes. Yeah. You, stay, you network together, you work together, and what yes. so she had come. She looks very happy now. Yes, ah, it's a great pleasure today. Uh, we, we came to Terego, Arua uh, district to pick a girl child. As we showed you how this child, we just met these two kids. They were uh, holding their water uh, on, onto, onto their head. And through that, we followed them up to make sure that we know why aren't they in school, most especially at this time uh, of the day. Of course, as a Monday, you expect a child to be in school. But we said, yes, let's follow them up. These kids, because we were strangers, because they were strangers, we felt um, that the community may be also look at us as strangers. But nevertheless, we were received, you know, very well. And they were happy. We met the grandmother. As you can see, the grandmother leading us. You know, we have the grandmother um, and the daughter. Uh, whom we picked 
as you know taking you through of how this journey went how we found them and how they ran you know village kids can run they're very fast they always you know speed very fast why because they fear strangers of course as the little ones I always told when you see any car that you don't know those are strangers so you need to run faster and of course they tell them that they are going to steal you because most children fear to be stolen because we've had that incidence of children being stolen these ones still feared and as a girl child definitely they all this fear they saw men and the ladies you know all of us in black uniform you know we look totally different we don't know the language they got scared of course but at the end of the day we managed to get them right in their bedroom they just went into their bedroom and hid under the beds earlier the community got concerned and they raised eyebrows to the authorities in fact the area youth councillor Faisal Esizo called officer in charge to come and save the situation as the dust settled, Pfizer and the elders commended Brother Shoes Support Organization for visiting the area and they wished the team could come back for more. I'm called Yasizo Pfizer, the female youth counselor of Sub County. And I really welcome you people to come and support us. For us in Yavu here, we are looking part we are looking for partners to come and support girl child education in our sub county. And the, the bad thing here I have observed in with the, my community members is only that they are looking these ladies or else these girls as their labor, child labor, during the season of tobacco, many of them are being used as their laborers. That is the biggest chal challenge I'm facing here. And the other thing is that these parents, both mother and the father, they are not supporting these girls. They are neg ne neg neg letting their rights. So um, for me, it is bad also. Supporting them is very hard for them. Buying scholastic materials like books, pens, and so on, it is hard for them. That's why these people are not going to school. So I'm really very happy for you are coming here to, to, to support us. A study of girls' education by International Center for Research on Women in West Nile reveals that the reasons for high dropout rates are much more complex than the commonly stated factors of child marriage and pregnancy. The research on women and partner organizations interviewed over 800 girls aged 14 to 18 in the community on questions related to conditions in their homes, educational opportunities, and gender roles. The study revealed that 30% of the girls surveyed had left school, even though 25% of girls survived had already had sex, less than 50% knew how to prevent the pregnancy. Terigo is a district in Uganda's northern region. It is located approximately 360 square kilometers 40 square meters northwest of Uganda's capital, Kampala. According to Papito, a professional tour guide, the capital of the district is the trading center of Leju in Aivu, subcountry, and it has a lot of historical attachment to the people. Terogot district covers an area of 1,102 square kilometers, 425 square meters, and recorded a population of 199,303 in the 2014 National Population Census. Terrigo District also has hosts as estimated 168,000 refugees, mostly from South Sudan, in the Impevi Refugee Settlement and the Western Zones of Rhino Camp Refugee Settlement in the district. Popular with tobacco fields across the roads, Terrigo District is contagious with the former Terrigo County, which was part of Arua District until 2006. That year, Maracha and Terrigo Counties were separated from Arua District to form Maracha Terrigo District. 
After nearly five years of disagreement on where the headquarters of the new district should be located, Terrigal County opted to return to Arua District, leaving Maracha County to form Maracha District on its own. In May 2020, Parliament approved the creation of Terrigal District, which went into effect on 1st July 2020.